two students in particular who became really disengaged. And I didn't know the reason that they were disengaged was because they were bored until I had really started implementing the five strategies. And once those were implemented, those students started to shine. They really, because they were allowed to think about math in their own way, and math started to make sense to them. And so they really started to shine. And they actually became my star students after that. And even with the formative assessment lessons, that structure will engage every student and differentiate for every type it of It starts person. to weed out the misconceptions, and so you're able to deal with that. And instead of trying to think about what misconceptions your kids have and addressing them, it's addressed through the formative assessment lesson. So you, it brings up everybody's misconceptions. So it, um, I think that's a big success of them too. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the students see their misconceptions mm -hmm. for themselves. You don't point them out to them. Right. And they see, and they can fix it. And um, it's just, so, it's more powerful than just, oh, here's this mistake. This is how you really do it. Don't, you can't be afraid to try it. It is scary. It is, it is a lot of prep work, but it is so beneficial. It's something you need to give it a chance to work. Um, and you can't be afraid of the mass chaos that's going to happen in your room, especially when you're doing the form assessment lessons and they're doing the collaborative activity um, because the kids get so much out of it. But it may look like, it will, not may, it will. It will look like mass chaos um, in your room because you're going to have kids paired up, grouped together, you can move your desks around, um, but it's, it's worth it. You need to speak less, much less of you doing the instructing. Um, the kids are going to rely on each other, their partner. Um, and it's and there will be times when you feel like you're pulling teeth. There will be times that you feel like you're about to lose your mind. There will be times that you just want to quit and just go back to direct instruction. It's going to happen. But one thing that I always have to keep reminding myself is kids can think and they can think well enough to get themselves out of this situation. So they can think through the process. It's up to me to allow them to make mistakes and learn their way through. So by me trying to teach them the process correctly so that they don't have to make those mistakes, they're not really learning why that process is useful. So if students can make those mistakes and understand why maybe another way would be better, it's better that they do that on their own instead of me telling them, no, 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 this is the best way to do it. I know what I'm talking about. You need to not be afraid of, like, if you pose a question and there's silence for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute, it's okay. They're processing. They process slower than we do. So we have to get used to that silence also, not just the mass chaos during the collab activity of the formative assessment lesson, but the time that they need to think and process through. It's okay if you don't have a kid immediately shouting out the answer or raising their hand because they know the answer. Um, and you're also going to have to take time to develop the environment in your classroom so that kids are used to it thinking like this and, and not waiting for you to give them the answer. And that takes time. Yeah. But once you have that environment developed, kids start to re rely on each other more like than you. Professors, undergrad, grad always said, you need to differentiate, you need to differentiate. But I would say, well, how? Other than just literally making up a separate lesson for every student, nobody really taught me how to differentiate. And the formative assessment lessons allow it so that, you know, kids that are high are high. They can, they can, they have more in-depth conversations about the lesson. But the low kids still have a way in and they can still do something in that lesson. So the lesson itself differentiates for the kids. You don't have to worry about doing that and that's what's so great about them. It's, it's one of the, I think one of the best benefits of the So lessons. the noise level is louder than what you're used to. But if you walk around and engage, listen in, and maybe start asking the kids a few questions, you'll realize that there's probably a lot more learning going on in that room than maybe the room next door where it's direct instruction. And also to just realize that the way a math classroom looks or has looked in the past is different now. Um, now we're realizing that students do need to talk about their work and 
discussion is important, whereas just sit passively taking notes is students are not learning when they're doing that. So just really be aware of what this looks like in the classroom and what your expectations of that teacher and what that lesson should be. Um, it's also really important to realize that this isn't just going to be like, oh, they're going to go to, my teachers are going to go to a one, two day training and then they're going to be experts. Um, Michelle and I are still learning new things. We've been doing this for two and a half years. Yeah, we've been doing it for a long time and we're still learning new things um, with the five strategies and with the formative assessment lessons, how to implement them better. And um, So it's not just a two day training and my, my teachers are also going to be experts. They need to work on this long term, have multiple trainings spread out every it couple of months. It needs to be a chunk of time where they can truly focus on just this. I think that's the only way it's going to roll out successfully. And the teachers will be sold on it because it does work. Mm -hmm. And anything that makes their job easier or makes their students learn more is going to be something that teachers are willing to do.